Hello world. The last time I made a video, it was the vinyl tags video of 2019. And I said in that video that I've been having problems with uh, playing vinyl records because my right hand speaker was dead. Which it was. And uh, the, I took my record player into Audio T last Friday. So yeah, a week ago yesterday and they did in fact confirm that it was the cartridge the Anya that uh, had failed they put my old exact on for me and that was working perfectly so yes it was the cartridge and they sent it away to Riga who thankfully have agreed to return it free of charge um, sorry repair it free of charge now um, it wasn't entirely plain sailing. I got a lift into Brighton the first time I went and uh, my friend Hannah, <laughs> clever Hannah, <laughs> drove through a bus lane and got a fine for it, which uh, I'm mortally sorry about. And yeah, uh, not entirely <laughs> happy about that one. But yeah, um, so the state of affairs at the moment is that I'm using my exact um, and on Tuesday uh, it'll be uh, having the Anya refitted to it. OK, so thanks to, to Rega for repairing that free of charge. That's very kind of you. Or not, as the case may be, that probably implies that there was some sort of manufacturing uh, gremlin going on somewhere. Um, but yeah, they did repair it free of charge, so please about that. Um, when I first got my Riga RP8 with the exact cartridge on it, that was going right back now to 2015, beginning of 2015. And at the time, the system I was using was probably not necessarily the system that was going to get the best out of uh, a high-end record player like the RP8 and I knew at the time that the exact cartridge because I couldn't afford an Afita 2 there was no such thing as the Anya then uh, but because I couldn't afford a Riga Afita 2 cartridge um, I knew that the exact was going to be a compromise on it nevertheless as a step up from the P5, it was an absolute revelation, a major revelation, as you will know if you uh, ever watched my review of the uh, RP8. Uh, I also have been through uh, two different amplifiers since then. So now I'm on the Illicit R. And I've also been through two speaker changes from the Riga R3s, which are great speakers. Um, get a pair second hand, you know, if you've got a, 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 a middle of the range system, get a pair of those second hand because they are really warm and fabulous speakers. Uh, the RS5s, likewise, if you can get a pair of those second hand, those were my next pair of speakers if you've got a larger room. Um, and now I'm on the PMCs. Uh, the 25, 23s, which are amazing speakers. And from that point of view, I can now go back to the exact and see really exactly what it was doing, exactly <laughs> what it was doing in, <laughs> in the system. Because as I say, I've been listening, you know, for the last year and a bit, I've been listening to the Anya. And now I can, you know, tell you really what the exact was bringing uh, into the into the fray, as it were. I've not listened to that many records uh, since they put the exact on. It's only been a few days, uh, but I have played some of the records that were in my vinyl tags um, uh, video a, a, a few days ago. So. What do I think of the exact? Well, the first record that I put on was Tom O'Dell, just because it happened to be in that pile. And 
I was absolutely mortified to start with because the right channel was still missing. This, children, is because I'm a dunderhead and what I'd done, I quickly realised, and I was so grateful that I quickly realised, was that, you know, because my flat is so tiny, I'm doing a lot of things by kind of feel, feeling round the back, as it were, matron. Mm. And uh, yeah, what I've managed to do was plug one end into the moving magnet input of the and of the Aria phono stage, and one end into the moving coil input, which was very stupid of me. So yes, no surprises. I only got sound out of one channel. Quickly sorted that out, um, and uh, yeah, um, I did a, a very basic uh, balancing setup. Uh, didn't spend too much time on it because as I, as I say, I knew that the cartridge was only going to be on for a few days. So um, yes, first record I played was Tom O'Dell. And once both channels were working, um, I was really, really surprised actually. Um, the exact is a really good performer, you know. It is being outshone, as I say, by the rest of the components in my system, but then that is showing exactly what it can do. And uh, the first thing that I noticed was a very much more definite uh, stereo uh, spread left and right. Uh, than the Anya and that really surprised me actually it really surprised me um, and it exerts a very definite sense of control over the music okay you're left in no doubt as to the um, the, the force of any kind of beat or anything that's playing in the music. Um, the bass is a little bit flabby, perhaps a little bit over-exaggerated, but not to any great degree. Um, I think I'd noticed that anyway when I was um, having my uh, big bass diagnosis um, crisis of a couple of years ago. Um, I don't know, again, I made a video and I spoke about um, a, a couple of Erasure albums, for example, that uh, were really uh, uneven in the bass. Um, one of them being um, the, uh, what's the song? Um, a Little Respect, for example. Yeah, that was a, yeah, a tad um, overblown in some areas and absent in other areas as it were and uh yeah i could probably lay the blame for that at the exact door um it didn't sound as open and willing to give and as free-flowing as the anya maybe that is because of the uh the fine line or it's a vital tip they call it um which technically speaking should be superior to the Anya's because the Anya is only an elliptical tip. Um, that's one of the trade-offs for not having an Afita 2. Um, but yeah, I think that, you, you know, it was really sort of digging deep into the groove and, you know, it didn't sound bad. There is absolutely no way that you can say it sounds bad. It makes a lovely, lovely sound, a lovely noise, but there just isn't this kind of um, joie de vivre, as it were, that the Anya brings to the party. You know, you, you really love a record with the Anya playing it. With, um, with the exact, you admire the record. You know, you, you start sort of being able to pull it to pieces and uh, yeah, see where it's going. Uh, the treble, Extreme treble, as I say, is extremely well controlled with the exact, but again, to the point of saying, hold on, I'd quite like a bit more. <laughs> yeah, curtailed is 
possibly the best word. Again, it's a sin of omission rather than a sin in itself. Um, I certainly noticed it when I played Ella and Louie. Um, I played my, my favourite LP from there last night, actually. And I really wanted, you know, the, the actual music to sing, you know, and it wasn't quite there, um, you, you know, and I sort of, uh, I, in a sense, yes, I do blame Ella and Louie and I blame their backing band and their engineers more than anything because, you know, the, uh, the vocals were very, very clear and out front and a beautiful mid-range, by the way. And again, that's down to the exact. And yeah, it, um, you know, it, it was just frustrating the way that the backing band just didn't have any kind of bounce or any kind of presence to it, you know. Um, and yeah, I'll say it again. I know that's the way it was recorded, but I also know that the Anya uh, does sort of liven things up a little bit, you know, uh, brings a bit more uh, detail and a bit more pizzazz, shall we say, pizzazz, that's a good word, let's use that word, pizzazz, uh, to, the, um, to, to the proceedings. Now, one thing that I never got to play from my vinyl tags uh, section was my new Troy Sivan album, uh, Bloom, which is, yeah, it's 2016, it's not 2019, but hey-ho, um, it's a brilliant album, and I thought, in absence of playing it on a record, I thought perhaps I'll play that one on Apple Music, this was while I was without record player, because I had to wait a couple of days, uh, while my fault was being diagnosed um, with audio T. So I, th so I thought I'd play it on Apple Music. Hmm, yeah. What can we say about Apple Music? What can we say about the way that these albums are now being mastered for digital? You know, just claustrophobic, no sense of real space to it. Um, and... I better turn that down because of downstairs kind of thing. Get it on the vinyl. Chuck it on your record player. And even the exact. The exact, again, it makes it a slightly more humdrum experience than perhaps it should be. But maybe you like that. You know, if your tastes are, you know, sort of very refined classical, for example or jazz or, um, you know, anything sort of more, you know, even some folk music, you know, you'll find that the exact is a great cartridge for that. Um, but yeah, the Anya for, you know, the fact that in real terms, it has a slightly inferior uh, elliptical stylus. Um, it, it's just got more power and guts to it you know um and yeah um but having said that you know listening to Troy Sivan on vinyl was a far better experience than it was listening to it on Apple Music or other streaming services are available folks uh, what else can I say about this cartridge? Yeah, while I was playing Troy Sivan, now Troy Sivan is on white vinyl. And one thing that I'd kind of, you know, again got myself sort of into a, a false sense of security about was the fact that an elliptical stylus is far better at dealing with dust on records. Um, any kind of fine line stylus, whether it's the nude Shibata of an Autophon 2M Black, or whether it's uh, the Geiger S-tip of my of my once upon a time, what I once had, uh, Goldring 1042 cartridge. Um, yeah, brilliant at pulling out detail from records and keeping noise down, but really not very good at um, sort of warding off dust. They, they just seem to collect it 
Um, and sometimes, you know, no matter what amount of cleaning you do to the stylus with this sort of thing here, um, not even sure what this is. It's uh, Audio Technica Stylus Cleaning Formula. There you go. But yeah, I mean, no matter what you do with that, you're still gonna have specks of dust everywhere and, and, and whatnot to have to deal with. And, you know, it's not fun having to get up in the middle of a record uh, because the dust has collected up so badly that um, the stylus cannot make proper contact with the groove and that just sounds awful, you know. Yes, a little bit of dust will make S's more sibilant and you'll hear a little bit of in there and you'll think perhaps that needs cleaning but shall I bother? But when the sound gets you know to a point or when the dust levels get to a point that really um you know just make it unlistenable um you know you've got to do something about it and walking over to my white vinyl um troy sivan uh several shades in and yes uh you know you can actually see you know this massive great splodge of dark brown dust uh on the record underneath the stylus but thankfully you know um yes i do believe in cleaning records um and sadly new records need a clean on a cleaning machine just as much as uh, second hand records do but i'm also lazy and you know sometimes i just don't bother you know and just hope for the best and unfortunately, it, it turned out that Troy Sivan was absolutely filthy. Um, but again, blowing the dust away that had landed on the record, giving the stylus tip a, a little bit of a clean, and then playing it again meant, you know, that uh, you, know, you could get through a side of the record, but then turn it over and you'll need to do exactly the same thing. Um, and... You know, within a couple of plays of the record, that uh, vital stylus tip will have cleaned the dust out for you. But, you know, it's a bit of a, a, of a faff and an agonising process. And when we talk about, you know, the quality of vinyl and the superiority of it over and above, you know, just about every other uh, sound playing medium um, on the planet, even today, you know, um, th that record that, you know, was invented at the beginning of the 20th century, um, you know, it's still, there's nothing to surpass it really, but it comes with its faffs. And that unfortunately is a faff that you're gonna have to deal with, especially with a, a high-end stylus tip. And that's not to say that I don't covet an, an, an Afita 2, because yes, I do, but you know, I would love to not have half the hassle with it. An elliptical stylus, slightly less uh, faithful to the groove, but, you know, at least it's in doing you know, a better job of fending off dust. Um, so there we have it. Uh, the one record that I thought, and thankfully it's a double album, but the one record that I thought really shined on the Afita 2 was my Sundark and Riverlight album uh, by uh, Patrick Wolf, which I have to say, even though, yes, I think the Anya makes a better fist of playing it, um, kind of lives up to, or is suited to, or better suited to the traits of the exact cartridge. I'm looking forward to getting my Afita 2 back again. Um, sorry, not my Afita 2, there was a, <laughs> a Freudian slip and a half. I'm looking forward to getting my Anya back again, um, you know, just so that I can, you know, play, you know, moving coil goodness records again. But, you know, if you've got a, 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 a middle of the range, record player, particularly a Riga record player, because, you know, Riga do make their cartridges to match their record players and the sonic qualities of their record players. But I don't think I would put that, um, you know, unless you were doing what I was doing, which was cost cutting and compromising. Um, I don't think I would put it on anything above a P6. 
or an RP6. Um, I think it's a new P6. While I was in at um, Audio T, by the way, I did notice that they had, first of all, in the window, um, an RP10 that, uh, and I imagine that the RP10 is due for a replacement soon, but I did notice that they have one in the window, uh, XDEM uh, with about 500 quid off the asking price. Um, I don't know whether that actually included the Afita 2 cartridge that was on it, but you know, if I ever win the lottery kids, then you know, something like that, that is, you know, it's just a sort of very hard to beat. Uh, but they did have the new P8, which I haven't made a video about yet because I don't know what to think about it really. Um, apparently, according to Audio T, who would say so, wouldn't they? Um, it's an extremely capable performer. My RP8 is an extremely capable performer. But um, yeah, um, I just, um, I, I, I don't know what to think about it. Uh, number one, uh, I'm, the only things I can think of, because I've not heard it, but the only things I can think of are sort of the, the kind of cynical and downside things, because that's the kind of person I am, a natural depressive, as it were. Um, but I don't like the fact that they, A, have got rid of a lid, and it now has uh, just a cover, which I don't think can be used while the record's playing. Um, it's just like a, per a Perspex cover sort of thing without the hinges and stuff. Um, and B, I like a record player to be a rectangle. And I have to say that, you know, I don't like my RP8 with the rectangular surround off it. Um, and I don't like the fact that they've done away with that rectangular surround altogether with the new P8. Um, what is good, I have found a positive, what is good is that the price of the new P8 is pretty similar to the RP8 when that first came out. Um, I, there might be, you know, it might be a, a hundred quid or so more expensive, but you know, the price is not that dissimilar. Um, and again, I I got my RP8 when Audio T were having a sale and they were doing 10% discount on Riga products. And because it was X display, I got a little bit more off it than that. And, you know, so, um, yeah, but, you know, again, you know, Riga do their best to provide, you know, quite exotic hi-fi gear. No, it's not an SME Model 10A or, you know, one of those great big sort of, um, what's the, there's a VP1 or something like that that's massive with a, with a turntable about that thick. But, so it's not one of those, but they are, you know, quite exotic hi-fi equipment at, reasonable prices you know uh there are record players still in existence that you could pay 10 fifteen thousand pound for and not even get a tone arm you know and, the, and a tone arm that is going to match that kind of level is going to cost you another five grand um and then a cartridge on top of that which will be at least another five grand as well so um you know it, it so full marks, really, to Riga for keeping their prices at vaguely sensible levels. I appreciate that they're expensive. Um, you know, even the, the cheaper ones, you know, the, the P2, uh, I think with a carbon on it, is 399 um, which, you know, is not cheap. But then again, people, you know, I don't have a car. I don't... Um, what else don't I do? You know, um, people will justify, you know, spending large sums of money on other things, you know, which I actually don't, um, you know, and if you're gonna, you know, buy a decent gaming PC or a, 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 a MacBook Pro or something like that, 
you know, you are spending similar amounts of money, you know, and when you want something that is actually going to deliver you really good sonic quality, you are going to have to spend money. Um, this is a this is coming on to, I suppose, a different um, issue altogether, which I need to make a separate video about. But yeah, um, I, for now, I'll just reiterate that thankfully, um, the new P8 is you know, excellent value for money. Um, but as I say, I'm not a big fan of that shape and um, I wish that they'd been able to somehow or other keep a lid on it. Right, with that, I'll end this video and uh, I will speak to you soon. Bye.